never again will you have to adjust an interproximal contact with a, when you're seating a crown. You're going to perfect the interproximal contacts on an uncut stone model. These the dies have not been cut in these models. It's a stone model and we've removed the gingival one-fourth and all the tissue part of the stone from the preparation on the stone model. I'll show you how to do that. We'll prep this tooth for a crown and this tooth for a crown. Now we've taken our impressions, our final impressions, and we've used one of the impressions to pour a die model. We're using another pour of the poly ether impression material to pour a solid model and you can see how we've cut all the stone tissue part and the gingival one-fourth of the preparation away. So the margins of the crown will be just hanging in space. They're not going to be touching anything. Only the body part of the crown will be in contact and then we can perfect the interproximal contact. See, we've cut all that away. Then you can fabricate your crowns on a, uh, the die model, but to perfect the, the interproximal contacts, we're going to move them from this die model to the stone model. See, so here are the crowns coming from the die model, and then we're trying them on again on the stone model. So what I've done is I've colored the interproximal part of the stone model with a pencil and then very gently scraped it off twice and that makes it just a little plus when you place your crown. So we're removing the provisional crowns, cleaning them, now I'm trying on the final crowns, pop floss through, this is unwaxed dental floss, should pop through snugly. Now I've extracted the first molar on the right side, that's why it's a little bit different, it's different than the, the uh, solid model and the die model. I'm checking the margins with my Explorer, wiping the tooth with tubeless Sid. This is after we've, pre, before we try the crowns in, we've pumiced them with a Profi cup and pumice and water, and then we've placed two by twos in the mouth and wiped the teeth with isopropyl alcohol and rinse that off. Now we're cleaning these crowns that have been treated either with Sandblaster or with Z-Prime, depending on what the material is. We're drying them out real well, placing our cotton tip applicator with red rope wax and then putting Vaseline in on the interproximal contact so it makes it easier to remove the excess cement. Then we're squirting our resin cement just around the margin. Don't fill the crown up or it won't seat. Squirt it just a thin layer around the margin. Just a thin layer. This is all you need. We've seated both the crowns, push into place. Now this is waxed floss. As my assistant puts her finger on the crown and the adjacent tooth, I'm going to pop the floss through the interproximal contact, but do not remove the excess cement until it reaches initial set. Remember, you never want to wipe excess cement off with a cotton ball. You want to have to break it off, to break off the initially set cement so you don't develop a void in the micro gap between the crown and the tooth. But you do want to go ahead and pop floss between or in the interproximal contact so cement does not set up in the interproximal contact. Now the crowns have reached, the cement has reached initial set. See we're popping that floss through. Then you're going to chip off or break off the excess, excess cement, then wipe it with a cotton ball, ball. then we're going to check our occlusion. And I like to let the cement set for about 15, 20 minutes before I check the occlusion. If you check it too soon and there's a prematurity, you may break the cement bond and the crown may come loose. So I don't ever check uh, the occlusion until the cement has set for 15 to 30 minutes. Here's another case, four teeth prepared for crowns. See the four crowns on the die model, the cut model. And the general crown is prepared on the die model. Now this is a solid model. You'll notice the dies have not been cut, but I've taken a round burr and cut all the way around each of these uh, tooth preparations on the stone model and removed all of the 
gingival tissue and the, the apical one-fourth of the tooth preparation from the stone. So when you place the crown on this solid model, the margins will just be hanging in space. They won't be touching tooth and they won't be blocked from seating by any of the stone. We're only using this model to perfect the interproximal contacts. So here are the crowns going on the stone model, the solid model, but the margins do not touch stone. That's very important. If the margins touch stone, it may not seat and it won't be uh, an accurate model for perfecting the interproximal contacts. You hear all the crowns on that model. And that's the dental minute. Never again will you have to adjust an interproximal contact on a crown. These techniques work and they work every time.